This is Collusion 2015, a project that Brian and I have been working on for about the last nine months to a year. Um, it's a collaborative effort that was uh, derived from 11 photographs of mine and Brian's interpretations of those photographs, both in paintings, uh, mixed media, and sculptures. Viewing his photographs, I just felt like there would be a great opportunity for Chad and I to work together. I attended Brian's uh, Coastal Refugee Show here at the Cultural Arts Center and was enamored with his work, his vision. My initial draw to Chad's work was my emotional response to his work. I feel that as a viewer, he doesn't waste my time. I take pictures, I put them in frames, and that's all I do. I felt it would be a great opportunity to take his subjects and interpret them in the painting or the, the, the sculpture. When we initially decided to do this project, we wanted it to stay as natural as possible and authentic. Because I usually only work from photographs, like slide shots in my head. So I, I pull from ex my own experiences, I pull from my own visions. That way I have the tone and the feeling of my subject for my painting. It was a very organic process that I was not put in a position where I had to go find anything specific or do anything different than I typically do when I go out to shoot. And Brian, with those that connected most closely with him, he was able to, to identify those. And I think we ended up with about 20 or so photos initially that we narrowed down to around 11 that ended up being the final, the final pieces for the show. Yeah, this exhibition is, uh, is really interesting with the two artists with the common aesthetic coming together uh, to work on a, on a common or work within the same aesthetic to achieve this uh, collaborative show, but the whole time keeping their, their own artistic voices very much at the forefront. Eric Rausch, who has been a wonderful curator throughout the process, approached us about potentially using the CAC and the Cultural Arts Center became available. Uh, we rallied for it and we ended up coming up with this show in this space, which obviously turned into a huge undertaking for both of us. As soon as I heard uh, that Brian and Chad were teaming up, um, to me it was instantaneous, this is a perfect match. We have a lot of similarities and I think both of us probably respond very negatively if someone tries to corral us or kind of guide us too much um, to the point where it's probably it ends up being much worse because we probably rebel against that. We're like wet cats. Yeah, I mean, really. Yeah. Uh, this piece right here, the photo that inspired it is right around the corner. His recognition of us as artists and his faith in the two of us working together. Eric was, although very involved, was also hands off when he needed to be. And that was a, it was a, it was a great approach and probably the only approach that you could probably really take with both of us. In curating the exhibition, it was about having uh, studio visits with the artists individually. Uh, we had um, just a handful of times that all three of us were in the same room together. He was a great filter for me. I, I have uh, moments when I am working that I want to see four shows come into one, and I need to start to separate those and divide and conquer and choose my wars. And Eric was a great voice for that. I, I, he was a great sounding board. And me being just kind of a third voice, and trying to help bring things together, but really letting them do what they were doing. One of the reasons Brian approached me is because he appreciated the way that I approached the subjects today. He wasn't looking for me to go and approach them differently. A paramount to this whole idea was, was that he had to have complete autonomy, and so did I. He had to come about in a very organic way, and the freedom to grow on his behalf as an artist and my behalf that opportunity had to be there. I think that he was looking for me to stay true to what I do, um, continue to do it as I always have, and then provide him the opportunity to kind of have a palette to choose from, and then you know be able to pick and choose the ones that connected with him the, the most. Taking the opportunity to use his photographs, which I could feel when I look at them, it was a challenge that I, I felt like I wanted to step up to. So I, I took it on. Coming into the show, I knew it had to be something that challenged me. It had to be something that would drive me forward, um, take me out of my comfort zone, and propel me. 
and that's exactly what this did. Which it, it was no small small feat. It was uh, I mean I, I made 2,000 bricks. You know they're handmade. They had to be done in such a way where they, they were light, they could float, um, they wouldn't bear too much weight, none of them had to be load-bearing. Then, you know, the, the full-size shelters, plus the paintings, plus the small sculptures, it was, uh, it was taxing. It was, it, was a, it was a lot of work. I tend not to spend a lot of time with my work. So I'll usually edit a picture, put the picture up, move on to the next picture. So I move very quickly in, in that manner. This show is probably, you know, in, in my very short career, what is hands down the, the largest leaps that I've taken in artistic growth have happened in the last 12 months. I don't do well, I don't focus very well for very long on anything. And this really opened up an entire different part of my art. And I'd never made an assemblage. I'd never done anything before in my life. It's something a little bit different. There's, it's still my photography. I can still incorporate that, but I can also work with my hands and do some different things that I had not really thought much about. And over the last 12 months, I've, I, I've you know, created an entire body of work that is now represented here. I knew uh, just looking at his work and, and, and the, the visual strength, I never had to worry about what his delivery would be. And we actually, neither of us saw our complete body of work until the day it showed up in this gallery. Which was, which was pretty amazing. It was, it was a big leap of faith for both of us. I hadn't seen these structures in person. I didn't want to ask Chad where they were so I could cheat and go see them in person. I had to do this all from a photograph, so it had to be the power of his visual. And then to sit down and spend time with each individual photograph, started to weed them out. Some wouldn't speak to me at all. Some wanted nothing to do with this, this uh, interpretation. They, they, wanted, they wanted nothing to do with it. Um, others were a struggle. If I tried to force a photograph to be a part of the show, it was a complete failure. Completely. It was just, a, it would just, it looked wrong, it, it would look unfinished, it looked like an argument. It looked like I painted an argument. I was able to see things, as I'm sure the viewers are seeing things too, but even I was seeing things for the first time in a different light. So if I look at, you know, my original work that I presented to Brian, and then I see his interpretation of it, there were several almost every time I looked at it and I was like, wow, I didn't see, how did you see that? My interpretation probably has a little bit more color and a little bit more life than the photograph. The photograph is a true representation, obviously, of what that structure, the state of that structure. Like, you know, how did you take this dark black and white photo and turn it into this amazing bright red you know just with a huge power statement in this in this massive you know painting and it was so changing for me it was it was it was such a cool thing to see somebody take something that i had provided and interpret it in such a way that it provided brand new life to it i mean aesthetically it was easy like certain photos would, would call out to me or i would i would feel certain photos more than others and that's how they aligned but then when I had the initial 19 or 20 photos on the wall, at that moment's when I had to start living with them. There has to be some alignments and, and some consistencies when they see something and they go, oh, this is what Chad saw, but when Brian looked at it, this is what he saw. And I think that that's, that's one of the very cool things about this show is that movement through the interpretation process. Each of these photographs then that became paintings or sculptures or what have you, this is me working off of how I feel they want to be perceived. So some of them that were in black and white or that are so run down, they look like absolute celebrations. They have a lot of color, they look like they have a lot to say, and it's kind of like they're, it's kind of like they're going away party, it's their last hurrah. Some of them uh, are very, very structured and tonal, and um, it was almost like when they spoke to me, they, they wanted to take me behind a tree and tell me stories and, and, and secrets and uh, about the families and the lives that had moved you know, between their walls, all this residual emotion. Physically, how taxing it was. Uh, emotionally, it was just very draining because every day I would wake up to all of these personas, all of these voices, and um, it, was, it was a lot. It was a lot to undertake. People took enough time, one, to come here for the conversations and coffee discussion but also that they involved themselves in such a way where they asked questions and they expected of me um, to back up 
my process because I, I store it all in my head and it's hard for me to put it into words. A lot of times I think we just do and don't stop in the middle of it to say, oh, this is how I'm doing it. It's just, it's, it's something that just kind of typically flows out of you. So to be able to take a step back and answer those questions and actually address them was a very interesting perspective to, to, to have that type of interaction with the public. All of these pieces kind of floated around. Initially, obviously there's this response, I want people to walk in and find something aesthetically pleasing or even beautiful. From that moment that they're drawn or captured, I want them to start seeing the layers, asking themselves questions, asking the artwork questions. Again, as an artist, it's my responsibility to make sure I have the answers for those. I don't want people to feel they walked away and they're still seeking. I want them to still ask questions, but I want them to find the answers for what they're asking within the artwork. Each brick represents a story or a, a ghost shelter, which is what I call um, these houses that have disappeared. Specifically, there are bricks within this installation that have addresses written on them. On one side, on the other side, they have the city code lot number because they've been torn down. There's that specific pinpoint of this idea that it was a, a home, it was inhabited, it was an environment, and now it's an empty lot, so it's been lost. There are the bundles of, of twigs, which are the reclamation of nature, the idea that somebody took these moments, these memories, and these stories, they bundled them together, and they were precious, and they saved them. They're wrapped with keys, uh, each key representing a lost house, a lost opportunity. The rocks that are piled along the side uh, that feel like they're anchoring this, this floating orb, and which they are, it's, it's uh, a lot of these, these homes won't be torn down by man, they'll be reclaimed by nature and they hold on to these stories and they're the guardians and they're like these soldiers standing in these fields but they know their purpose and, they're, and, and, and they hold on to that purpose and then when it's done the stories just become recycled, they're part of the earth again. And a woman just happened to be, I think she was taking a class here and she walked by and looked at one of the bricks and she goes, oh I know that street, it's where my grandma used to live. And then she started telling a story. All I wanted to do was be like, you get it. But to have that five minute conversation with that woman who saw the structure, was drawn into the structure, was able to identify something immediately to her and make that connection, was that, that was the show. Yeah. She, she, she made the entire show people were talking about where they lived as kids and, and who used to own what house and people were talking about you used to live in that house and then and then I bought it from you 10 years ago and we're thinking about selling and there's this great little starter home down the street it was fantastic it was so genuine and what we didn't want to do was just make it this romanticized view of the rural farmstead you know we wanted to also make sure that we were in no way ignoring you know the the urban blight that's happening today people have exactly that. They've, they've romanticized the rural component of decay. There are beautiful homes within the urban settings of Columbus that are just as romantic and just as beautiful, you know, beautiful in their, their state of decay, but these neighborhoods can really be uh, salvaged and they can really be re-inhabited one house at a time. People look and they're like, well, there's no way that can be saved. Which is true. I'm sure the foundation is gone, the roof has been leaking, I'm sure that the, the you know, load-bearing beams are probably snapping. But it doesn't mean that somebody can't come in and resurrect the shelter in such a way where they can save three quarters of the lumber or they can save components of this house and then put that into a new, a new build. We are hoping that it won't be some large conglomerate that comes in and buys these houses once they go into foreclosure or a holding company that just wants to rent them out to people who don't invest in their neighborhood. It's nice that people are going to live there, I'm not saying it's not, but oftentimes in a neighborhood where I live that's on economic hardships, they just become these houses where the inhabitants come, they're there until they get kicked out, they don't care, they're almost like legal squatters until they stop paying their rent. So many barns are being torn down because unfortunately farmers are, you know, disappearing. I think that the reclamation process of these buildings and having them get reused is a fantastic way to kind of continue those stories and continue a connection to the past.
Brian's one of those artists that I don't believe really lets a lot of people into his circle. And I, I think that I've, I'm very fortunate and lucky enough to be inside of that circle. Typically do not play well with others. I don't really invite people into my studio. I don't invite people into my process. This is two artists really giving all of themselves to this, this collaborative process, but it certainly is a, a unique exhibition uh, for that reason, and um, I think it's one that will be remembered for, for years.